before you is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner as equals. Take a seat. I insist. He's trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. I, too, have convictions, one of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. You're no titan of Felician, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain... Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Hey, that's 25 real. That's good money. Think of all the stuff you could. Yes, I know, Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun, lost gun, lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. I know everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. You want to cry? God, you're weak. Whatever you do, don't cry. You'll think you're disgusting. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this Mr. Dubois 
he keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! While Everard is distracted by your odd behavior, the lieutenant's eyes are mapping everything around you. The folder, desk, papers on the wall. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow. In a kind of throw-in motion? Like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition isn't terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Huh. You got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Mega rich light bending guy? Oh my god! How did that get in there? Damn it to hell, Harry! I specifically told my guys to check all the containers for mega rich light bending guys. Honestly, Harry, we might be moving all kinds of suspicious things through this harbor, but I won't be caught transporting the light bending mega rich. I have a reputation to protect. You're right, Harry. I am a socialist. I'm going to catch the mega-rich guy inside the container and harvest his energy to power the harbor's fog lights. <laughs> I shudder to think what you're going to tell me next, Harry. Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everart, I call you Harry. My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. I assure you, there's nothing to be ashamed of, Harry. You're among friends, and the good news is... I have a big fat folder on you, Harry. I'm sure you have a lot of questions to ask. Maybe I can help you out. Don't trust him. For all you know... Dubois might be his name. You need to confirm this. I'm sure you had some concerns you thought I might be able to address. And you were probably right. I can. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. It's Harry. Harry Dubois. You feel like a Dubois, but you don't feel like a Harry. Strange. Sure, okay. You're Harold. Harmon. Haroldimus? But that's not what the record says. The record says Harry Dubois, a real man's name. <sighs> Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. I, however, wish to help you any way I can. But of course, Harry. Your precinct is the 41st and you live in Jamrock. You're a Jamrock boy. A long way from home, but that's okay. Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? That's why I like you, Harry. A good man knows both his strengths and his weaknesses, and you, my friend. You are one of the all-time greats. Well, Harry, if I were to sum you up in one word, 
It would be apologetic. Yes. You seem to be. A lot of the time. But right now, there's no reason to be. Let loose a little. Be you. Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for Union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. As you look at the folder, Evera covers it with his hand and pets it. Is he trying to hide that it's not a real RCM folder? It certainly doesn't have the RCM stamp on it. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau, and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi, from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age... Rubbish, Harry. Rubbish. I mean, look at you. For your age, you are obviously in peak physical condition. A real silverback. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and... effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Harry, Harry, I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. I assure you we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. The lieutenant is concerned about the lost gun and feels that the fact you haven't prioritized looking for it is unfortunate, if inevitable and doesn't put the RCM in a good light. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun-finding competition on our hands. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help like I'm helping you with your lost gun. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike, so much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me, but there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now, I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing, absolutely nothing shady about it. Does this jiggling ooze think he's going to use you? He's got another thing coming. Play his game, son. With your eyes peeled. He's going to slip up. And when he does, you're going to come out on top.
Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsaragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Mazovian socio-economics. Nought point nought 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 percent of communism has been built. Evil, child-murdering billionaires still rule the world with a shit-eating grin. All he has managed to do is make himself sad. He is starting to suspect Krasmezov fucked him over, personally, with his socio-economic theory. It has, however, made him into a very smart boy with something like a university degree in truth. Instead of building communism, he now builds a precise model of this grotesque duplicitous world.